Amen. Well, good morning. Good to see all of you this morning. We're so glad you're here today or you're watching online this morning. If we haven't met and you're new this morning, my name is Kyle. I'm one of the pastors here. We're excited for today. and We're so thankful for our mothers. Happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers. In fact, if you're a mother, we just want to honor you for just a second. Would you just stand up if you're a mom real quick? Let's give all of our mothers a hand. We're so thankful for our mothers for putting up with the rest of us. Amen. (laughs) Well, hey, we're glad you're here. Happy Mother's Day. What a great day on Mother's Day. It's also kind of a bittersweet day on Mother's Day because maybe some of us have lost our mother or can't be with our mother or would like to be a mother, but maybe that hasn't happened yet. Things aren't great between you and your mother. We want you to know that We're praying for you today as you navigate today. It's kind of a bittersweet day. We celebrate our mothers, but we also remember our moms, and maybe some of us are remembering our moms today. So we want to say um, we're thinking of you this morning. Uh, Before we get into today, today's going to be a one-off, meaning it's not a series. It's just a message today as we think about moms. I want to tell you about a series we're going to start next week for just a second. We're going to start a series called The Early Church looking at um, the faithfulness and fruitfulness of the early church. And it's going to really be going over the book of Acts, looking at the way the early church really shared the gospel. So that's going to be exciting. And as we were putting this together, I got to thinking, um, Pastor Adam doesn't want me to do this, but Pastor Adam actually wrote a book that goes along with, uh, in fact, it was the whole book that he wrote was on the book of Acts. So if you would like to snag that book today or sometime during the series, it's actually at the Welcome Center. I think they're like $10, but um, it would really go along with the series that we're getting ready to start, so we wanted to make you aware of that. And then finally, today we're doing a one-off on Mother's Day, and I got a question for you as we're getting into this today. What do you do when things feel out of control with no good solutions to your situation? What do you do when things feel out of control with no good solutions to your situations. Do you freak out, shut down, get cynical, have a panic attack, eat your feelings, drink your feelings, smoke your feelings, lose your temper, or maybe something else, or maybe some of you would say, yeah, I do all those things, right? What do you do when things feel out of control with no good situation? This is a little bit of a story I can look back on and laugh. It's kind of lighthearted, but it kind of shares a little bit. Um, a while back, I was, it's been a few years ago, um, I was actually emptying the trash in the bathrooms. I occasionally do that. And so I was emptying the trash in the, in the guest bathroom. And as I reached down to grab the trash can, I slipped. I kind of tripped. And when I tripped, and I, I landed on the line that goes to the toilet. So all of a sudden, I have water gushing out of the toilet. I reach down real quick to turn off the water, and that didn't help. The water is shooting up towards the ceiling, right? I'm thinking, what do you do when things feel out of control? This is completely out of control. My son is playing. He's, my son Noah is in the bedroom right next to the guest room. He's playing video games or I don't know what he's doing. And I'm like, Noah. He's like, what? I'm like, the water is everywhere. He goes, well, what do you want me to do? I said, I don't know. I said, put your foot over it while I go try to figure out what to do. So (laughs) this water is gushing up out of the floor. Noah's got his foot over the water. It's not helping, so the water's spraying him in the face. I don't have a turnkey, for those who know, to go turn the water off. So my neighbor, he does. So I run over there. Get, get the tur- we get the turnkey, I get it shut off, and I go in there, and Noah is just soaked. Our carpet soaked. So a few hundred dollars later, we got it dried out, and they came out and dried it. But it was, it was, good. It was not good. So when I ask you the question, what do you do when things feel out of control with no good solutions to your situation? I can say that I didn't handle it very well. I just kind of panicked, you know? And sometimes the situations that we deal with aren't just a water problem or some kind of funny story that we can, not then, I I wasn't laughing that day. In fact, my wife comes home, Noah and I are soaked, and she's like, what's wrong? I'm like, where were you? So I won't tell you how that whole story went down, but I'll just leave it there. But sometimes it's a lot heavier than that. And what do we do when things are out of control? Here's what we're going to talk about today and be reminded of this morning. Maybe some of us learned for the first time today that we can trust God even when things feel out of control. Amen? 
And it's easy to say that, and for those of us who've grown up in church, we would get that right on a test. You know, if I were to come up to you and say, true or false, when things are crazy, you can trust God. You would say, true, right? But sometimes when it happens, it's difficult to do. But the reality is this morning, we might have some people in here today that your life feels out of control. Maybe financially, maybe there's a physical problem going on with you or someone else. Maybe there's a marriage situation. Um, I could list a bunch of different scenarios, but for whatever reason, just because we have so many today and people online, there's somebody that's like, hey, this is right where I'm at. And the reminder for us today is even when things are out of control, God is still in control. Amen? And so we're going to look at a story from Scripture. There was a lady in Scripture. Her name was Jochebed. She happened to be Moses' mother. And it, the situation that she was in, we're going to look at it because it felt like, felt like things are a little bit out of control. Maybe not just a little, a lot of out of control. And we're going to look at how she handled it. We don't know a lot about Jochebed. The Bible doesn't go on and on about her. She's listed in Hebrews and in Exodus, but there's really, that's about it. So I want to read you the story. If you have your Bibles or if you have the Church Center app, our sermon notes are on there. You can go there as well. If not, we've got it on the screen. But here's the story of Jochebed um, found in Exodus. So here's what took place. Here's what caused the whole issue. Pharaoh, who's the leader, the king at that time, he gives an order out of panic. Pharaoh starts panicking because um, the Israelites keep multiplying and multiplying and multiplying. And he's worried that the Israelites who are living in Egypt are going to outnumber the actual Egyptians. So he comes up with this idea to combat that. So he gives this order to all the people. He says, throw every newborn Hebrew boy into the Nile River. Let's read the last sentence. But you may let the girls live, okay? So that's a, uh, what? Well, about that same time, a man and a woman from the tribe of Levi, they get married and the woman becomes pregnant and she gives birth to a, to a son, She saw that he was a special baby, right? Now, moms, you all think your baby is special. You know, he's just so special. She's just so special. You know, no matter what, when you see a baby, whether they're pretty or not, you can say they're precious, right? I mean, sometimes you can say they're cute. I had a friend of mine say, if if nothing else, you can say they're precious, all right? So that was too much information, but there you go. So the woman becomes pregnant, gives birth to a son. She saw that he was a special baby, and he kept him hidden for how long? For three months, right? So at some point, though, you can't keep him hidden anymore. And so the woman, she can no longer hide him, and she gets this basket made of papyrus reeds, and she waterproofs it with tar and pitch. She puts the baby, this is nuts. Who would do this? She puts the baby in the basket and lays it among the reeds, let's read it, along the bank, which has crocodiles, right? Some of you that are a little bit older, maybe remember the Charles Heston Ten Commandments movie. Anybody can remember that? Our kids are like, "Uh, what are you talking about? But when I was a little kid, we would watch this Ten Commandments movie and they'd tell the whole story of Moses and when this, this scene would come up, it was like a little kiddie pool that, that the baby would just kind of float along right down the stream. And the, I mean, that's not how the Nile River is. It's full of crocodiles. It's deep. It's a current. Some of you have been in the river before. I actually went on a canoe trip one time and got pinned, um, which if you want your marriage, just see if your marriage will last, go on a canoe trip. <laughs> but I got pinned up against some logs and my thing got overturned and I actually went out the other side. But I got to thinking, man, I could have been... You know, a river, a current is, is strong. She puts the baby in the Nile River. The baby's sister then stood at a distance watching to see what would happen. Soon, Pharaoh's daughter comes down to bathe in the river, and her attendants walked along the riverbank. When the princess saw the basket among the reeds, she sent her maid to get it for her. When the princess opened it, she saw the baby. The little boy was crying, and she, let's read this, and she felt sorry for him. Now, here's the first thing I want to say. Some of us have maybe heard the term provenient grace. If not, it's the grace that goes before us. Like maybe you've had to have a confrontation with someone you don't really want to. You need to tell them something, or maybe you need to give news to somebody, or whatever it could be. 
And, and ahead of time, you're like, hey, please be praying with me because I've got to talk to them or please be praying about this. I've got an interview. What you're really praying for is prevenient grace. It's the grace that goes before and prepares the way. Can I tell you this today? It was by no accident that that lady felt sorry for the baby. Imagine if she would have had a different response like, well, hey, that's one of the boys that was supposed to be killed. We need to kill the baby. No, that's not what happened. The little boy was crying and she felt what? Sorry for him. That's a miracle. This must be one of the Hebrew children, she said. Then the baby's sister, get this, she's so smart. The baby's sister approaches the princess with an idea. She goes, should I go and find the Hebrew wom- a Hebrew woman to nurse the baby for you, she asked. Yeah, do it. Yep, sure, the princess replied. So the girl went and called who? That's genius. The baby's mother. Take this baby and nurse him for me, the princess told the baby's mother. And then I will pay you for your help. So Moses' mom took her own baby home to nurse him. Later, when the boy was older, his mother brought him back to Pharaoh's daughter, who adopted him as her own. The princess named him Moses, for she explained, let's read it, I lifted him out of the water. So it's a pretty crazy story. And I asked you earlier, what do you do when things feel out of control and there's no good situation There's no good way to handle the situation. So I want to give you some observations today, a couple of observations and then some thoughts. Here's the first one. Jochebed's actions spoke to the intensity of the situation. Sometimes desperate times call for desperate faith. The reality is, here's what's going on. She's minding her own business, doing her own thing, thing, and all of a sudden this command, this rule, this law, this decree comes down that says every boy that's two years old or younger, we're going to throw into the Nile River. What is she to do? She has no options. And you think about putting the child in the Nile River, as I mentioned earlier, with crocodiles in the current, that doesn't, that just seems crazy. So how does she handle this? I was thinking of David's psalm in Psalm 55, 22 that says, give your burdens to the Lord and he will take care of you. Let's read it. He will not permit the godly to slip and fall. Here's another one. Isaiah says, um, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2, it says, when you go through what kind of waters? Deep waters. I will be with you. That's a promise. Then he says, when you go through rivers, kind of funny, we're talking about a river. When you go through rivers of, here's another promise, let's read it. You will not drown. And when you walk through the fire of oppression, another promise, you will not, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. And then what's interesting, in the very next verse, he kind of authors it, right? Because sometimes... Um, Somebody will say, well, who's the one who ordered that? And you say, well, the boss did. Oh, okay. Well, if he said it, then God says, look, I'm the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. I'm the one that's saying, when you go through deep waters, I'll be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. That's not just something that some poet wrote or just anybody wrote. I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. You can take it to the bank. When you go through difficult stuff, I will be with you. God is with us in desperate times. And he's with us when it doesn't seem or feel like there's any great solution. We don't really talk about it a lot, but the reality is is that Jochebed's actions spoke to the faith that she possessed. In fact, in in Hebrews chapter 11, we, we think of it as the hall of faith. It says this, it was by faith that Moses' parents hid him for three months when he was born. They saw that God had given them, given them an unusual child, and they were not afraid to disobey the king's man command. It says it was by faith. 
Jochebed acted in faith. And let me tell you this. I don't know about you moms. I'm not a mother. I'm a dad. But the math tells me sticking a baby in a basket on a river with crocodiles, and it's not a pool, it's a river, would take faith. When she could no longer do what she was doing. I mean, the first three months, it worked fine. She just hid the baby. She nursed the baby. She loved the baby. Just like, you know, she couldn't take the baby out. Sometimes when they're real little, you can't tell if they're a boy or a girl. Maybe, maybe for a little while she, he, she could. But at some point, she couldn't hide the baby anymore. We don't know all the different dynamics. Maybe they were checking every baby that was born. So maybe she just stayed in the house. But we know that she hid the baby. And what was working wasn't working anymore. Three months had passed. He was screaming. He was crying. He was, walk, he was starting to develop. That she couldn't. What was working is not working anymore. What do I do? How do I handle this? Some of us remember the famous uh, scripture that Solomon writes. He says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on what, church? Anybody been there before? I've been in situations, and so have you, where we just didn't have any understanding. Or the understanding that we had worked out a different way than what it should. The math says you stick a baby in the Nile River, not good things are going to happen. Seek his will in all you do. And here's another promise. Let's read it. And he will show you which path to take. Jochebed was faithful to God. She trusted God, and she acted in faith. So how, how did God respond to Jochebed's faith? Well, let's look at that for just a minute. First of all, just state the obvious today, Pharaoh's daughter found the basket. I mean, that could have easily gone a different direction. She doesn't see the basket. The basket goes right past where the opening was that the servant was going to be. But Pharaoh's daughter finds the basket. And then Moses' big sister witnessed this and thought in wisdom that just didn't come from her. God put it on Moses' sister's heart to offer to get a Hebrew woman. I think I know somebody that could nurse that baby. It was actually Moses' mom. And then on top of that, just a little throw in, the princess pays Jochebed to nurse her own baby. And then after he's weaned, Moses is raised as royalty by the princess in total luxury with the finest education available. The solution that God provided, it was far beyond what Jochebed must have imagined when, when she placed him in the basket. Sometimes we don't even know what God will do with just a little bit of faithfulness. Amen? When you put your faith into action... You shouldn't be surprised if God shows up in a way you never imagined. I want to share just a little bit, a little story with you about that today. Um, some of you who have been around the church a while have heard me tell this story before, but I share it every once in a while because uh, we have new people here and, and it fits here. Uh, I'm not proud of it, but God uses, uses us. So when, when I was in just out of high school into college, um, I didn't make great choices and a few years went by and then I went to Mid-American Nazarene University and I found Jesus there. I grew up in church, but I wasn't really completely committed to God. And, um, I was actually working at a car wash at the time and I was just talking with the Lord and I said, God, if there's anything in my life that you're that you're not pleased with or that I need to make right, tell me. And I no longer got those words out of my mouth and the God started bringing some stuff up to me. And one of those was, I had, was, I was when I was in college, I would go to the Y out here and pretend that I had a membership there and I would go and I used it for a year. I never paid a dime. I'd just go in there 
and use it and leave. I just walk in like I knew what I was doing, like I was a member. No one ever questioned me. That time left, I moved away, went to college, got married, like just forgot about it. Didn't even think about it anymore. I actually didn't. I just didn't think about it. It was wrong, but I just didn't think about it. And when I came to Christ, the Lord just brought that to my attention loud and just like, you need to make that right. You stole from them. You owe them whatever a year's membership was. We were just, Whitney and I were married and we didn't have any money as most newlyweds do. And I went to my wife and I was like, hey, you know, I think I need to do this. And she's like, well, we don't have the money, but if you feel like you're supposed to do it, go ahead. So I sent this check with a letter saying I'm, you know, I asked Jesus into my heart and I want to apologize several years ago. You know, this is what I did and it was embarrassing. I sent it and I, as I had the, I had the letter in my car with a little stamp on it. And when I put it in the, in the mailbox, you know, the post office mailbox, I was like, oh, okay, that's good. Remember we said, when you put your faith into action, you shouldn't be surprised if God shows up in a way you never imagined. I thought the main thing that I needed to do was I wanted to get God off my back. I was feeling guilty about it. I just needed to like do the right thing, you know. About a month later, I don't know, I get a call from my mom. My mom lives in Arizona. I told no one other than my wife. I didn't tell anybody that, that this had happened. I get a call from my mom. We were talking, and she goes, hey, I heard about the letter you sent. I was like, what letter? What are you talking about? The letter you sent to the Y. Did you, Whitney? Did, no, I didn't say a word. I said, how do you know about that? She said, well, Jack, who at that time ran the Y, he eats lunch with your relative, Kyle, who doesn't know Jesus. And they were sitting in autos, and Jack takes the letter out and flips it in front of my uncle, who doesn't know Christ, and says, look at the guts of this kid. And my uncle opens a letter and says, well, that's my nephew. So then my relative calls up my mother and said, what would possess Kyle to do that? And she was able to share about the Lord, and all I was trying to do was get God off my back. I only share that letter to give God credit because when you put your faith into action, you shouldn't be surprised if God shows up in a way you never imagined. We don't know how God can use faithfulness, amen? At the same time, do we believe that God is big enough to take care of you even when what you want to have happen doesn't happen? Think about that for a second. Do you believe that God is big enough to take care of you even when what you are wanting to happen doesn't happen? You know, sometimes we wish for outcomes. I actually went to church here as a kid and then moved away for 10 years. I remember we had a lady in our church who had cancer Everybody prayed really hard and fasted and prayed that God would heal her. And around that time, we had another person that was, had cancer, and God miraculously healed them, and we're praying the same way. God, would you do the same thing for Esther? Would you heal her? She was an amazing, amazing person, wonderful, godly woman, and we prayed and we prayed. Some of you, a few of you are around, and you know what I'm talking about. Because what we wanted to have happen was for her to get healed, and we prayed like that, and we believed like that, and we also did the math in our own head and thought, if there's anyone that deserves a healing, it's Esther. God didn't heal her the way that we thought. Maybe it's not just that story. Maybe in your own life, you, you wanted something to happen. Made sense on paper. For it to happen the way that you were thinking. You weren't being selfish. You were thinking, God, you could use this person as a trophy of grace. God, this job would, would, would not only help me financially, but it would help glorify you. God, this situation, if it would work out this way, as it seems to it would in my head, then, then God, you would get all the glory. And then it doesn't happen the way that you would like it to happen. Can I tell you that God is still worthy to be praised and we can still trust him even when it doesn't work out the way that we would want it to. I share that today because that's not just a hypothetical. Some of us have been there before. 
You prayed for your mom to be healed. You prayed for someone you know to get free from something, and maybe it didn't happen or it hasn't happened yet. God is still worthy to be praised today. Isaiah writes, don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. Let's read it together. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. We can trust God even when things feel out of control. Is there anybody in here today that that's where you're at? Things feel out of control. It doesn't feel like you know what to do next. What would happen today if you would simply say, God, I don't know what's next. I don't know how this is going to work out. God, you know the deepest desire of my heart. And if it happens, I praise you. And if it doesn't, I praise you. What would that look like today? It's Mother's Day today. Mom, sometimes life can be out of control. Family, sometimes life can be out of control. Moses' mom trusted God even when things felt out of control. And so can we. Moms, you have a big job. You bring life into the world and you nurture our children all along the way and we celebrate you. In fact, let's give our moms a hand again. I thought we might end the service a little bit different. Since it's Mother's Day and we are celebrating moms who helped give us life, we thought it'd be good to invite Francis Oldweiler, who is the director of V Medical Clinic, to come and share a little bit about all that V Medical is doing to come, along, come alongside families and support the life of a child. As we celebrate moms, as we celebrate life and the value of a life, we want to bring Francis Oldweiler up and just share with us a little bit. Let's welcome her as she comes. Francis drove all the way from Independence, Kansas today to be with us. Go ahead, come on up here. And so uh, thank you for coming, Francis. You're welcome. Um, Francis, some of us may not know about V or maybe you've heard of it but don't know specifics. So I know you got a story you want to tell and then tell us a little bit about V. Absolutely. So we are a pro-life pregnancy clinic here in Pittsburgh, Kansas, and we offer mostly pregnancy services to women who need them. Um, I'd like to share just a little story with you about one of our recent clients. She came to us needing a pregnancy test. She recently came to Kansas estranged from her family, but had a family member willing to take her in and drove all the way to go pick her up. And when she got here, she found out that she was pregnant and didn't want to be. She has another child and didn't think that she could take care of this one as well. And so she came to see us, and we sat and we discussed things with her and kind of got to know her a little bit and some of the fears that she was experiencing. We did her pregnancy test with her and offered her the ultrasound that she would need in order to obtain her abortion. And she came back for that appointment with the father of her child. And during that ultrasound appointment, we really got to see... Um, this young life growing inside of her, it, um, it had its heartbeat, and we were able to listen to it and share that with not only her, but the dad as well. And you could tell that that was a turning point for them, and it opened up the conversation to a lot of things that they really needed to discuss to be able to move forward and whether or not they would consider carrying out with the abortion or choosing life for the child. They did decide to come back a couple of weeks later for an additional scan, which happened to be just a few days before her scheduled abortion appointment. And during that time, we got to see a much larger active baby with a nice, strong heartbeat. And uh, the dad at that time really just had a change of heart. And again, they were able to just kind of sit with us and sit in our clinic and have the time needed to be able to talk about some of those difficult decisions that they needed to make. Um, 
Thankfully, so far, she has not decided to have an abortion. While they were in our clinic, she decided that she needed a life mentor, which is a program that we offer, and we train people within the church to come alongside these people who don't have a support system and become that support system for them. Her life mentor um, started texting with her, and through that conversation, they developed this relationship that ended up with her picking her up to go shopping for an Easter outfit for her son so that they could go to church with her on Easter this year. And she took her to Easter with her and took her to Easter dinner with her family and just made her feel right at home. That's awesome. That's awesome. Let's give God praise. That's awesome. So what services do you provide and how can we help and partner with you? So the main services that we provide are the pregnancy testing, the ultrasound services, and we provide STI testing with referrals for treatment and parenting education classes where parents can earn bucks in to shop in our resource closet that people generously donate items like diapers, wipes, clothes, things that all families need for their child. And a couple of ways that we help supply these services free to our clients is we do fundraisers throughout the year. We currently have one starting today. It's our annual change drive, and um, Kyle was gracious enough to participate in that with us. There are some buckets located around the church where we collect spare change, dollars, checks, if you want, um, and all of that provides free medical services to the people in this community. The other big fundraiser that we do is our annual banquet every fall. This year it will be in September. And during that time, we use it as a time to reflect on all of the things that God has done in our clinic the last year. This year will be an exciting year. We are doing the theme Jubilee, and we have been intentionally praying over all of the clients that come to see us and the things that are going on in their lives. And we're focusing on that this year. All right. Let's give Francis a hand. Thank you so much for coming and sharing. So so a couple things we want to do today to support V with it being Mother's Day and we're celebrating life um, is, one, we're going to take up a love offering today. Um, When you leave at the offering boxes, there's a little uh, drawer desk thing there, tabletop, and on there is an envelope. If you'd like to give to V today as a one-time gift, um, you can put cash or check, whatever you want, put it in there and drop that in the offering boxes. That's the first way that we, we can help. The second way is what Francis alluded to, which are these buckets. We're going to have buckets available at that same place that you find the envelope. They'll be there from Mother's Day to Father's Day. Say that with me. Mother's Day to Father's Day. So you can drop change in there. It'd be a great way to get your kids involved in helping and being a part of that. You can do that as well. And then, of course, I think it's September is V Medical Banquet, and you can be a part of that. So... Um, We appreciate you, Francis. Give her one more hand for coming today. Thank you so much. And that really kind of fits with our point today. People, some of these clients come in and they're coming in and things feel out of control. It's not just clients, it's all of us. We have things in our life that feel out of control and we feel desperate and we don't know what to do. In fact, in a group this size, that's where one of you are today. Maybe people know it, maybe people don't. Maybe it's just you. Can I remind you today... If it feels out of control, you can still trust God, and he is with you. Amen? Amen. So as our band comes today, let's stand, and I want to just pray with you today. Lord Jesus, we thank you for our moms. We thank you for, Lord, what they do for us. We thank you, more importantly, for who they are. We thank you, Lord, that um, you're with us, Lord, even if Mother's Day is a hard day. Some of us have lost our mom maybe recent or maybe a long time ago, would you be especially close to them today? I think of Whitney, my wife, who had a miscarriage before Noah. Maybe there's some of us that are wanting to have a child and it's just so far it hasn't happened. I pray, Lord, that you comfort them. Maybe there's some of us that are past childbearing years and we never were able to have one. Lord, would you be especially close to them? Father, others maybe are their relationship with their mother is strained. Lord, would you be close to them today? But Father, thank you for the reminder today that no matter what's going on in our life, you are with us 
and we can trust you. In fact, with every head bowed and every eye closed for just a second before we wrap the prayer up and we go into worship, I want to ask you something right now. Is there anything in your life right now that just feels overwhelming? Maybe it's anxiety, depression, addiction, relational, marriage. I don't know. Maybe you do. And if you would say, well, no, I can't think of anything. Well, maybe do you know anybody that is there and probably all of us could say yeah I know somebody if it's you if you would say man I'm the person that feels out of control could you just would you consider right now just saying God I trust you even though I don't understand would you be able to just turn that over to God and say Lord I'm going to walk by faith not by sight And if it's not you, if you know someone who's going through it, would you commit in this moment right now to pray for them and lift them up? Maybe someone close to you has experienced loss. Maybe someone close to you is going through marriage issues or financial issues or uncertainty. Would you commit in this moment? I mean, you're not going to tell anybody, just between you and God. Would you commit to make it a point just to lift them up and bring them before the throne of God right now? We're just going to take 10 or 15 seconds of just silence as the band plays and just let God speak to you and give you the opportunity to respond to Him. Jesus, you are worthy of our praise. You are faithful. You're faithful in the storms. You're faithful in the down times. You're faithful in the valley. You're faithful on the mountaintop. You are faithful. We thank you, Lord, that you never leave us nor forsake us, that we're never alone, that you are with us. May we take comfort in knowing that you are with us. Father, we make a commitment to pray for those that we know that are hurting And we trust you with our own hurts today. We give you praise and glory for who you are. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Everybody said.